So now that we understand how the central limit theorem will affect our distribution shapes, we want to think about what impact this is going to have on our probability calculations. So we're going to start off with tail probabilities. Those are probabilities that are in the tails of the normal curve. And you can see from this drawing we have down here, we're talking about being over in the left tail, over in the right tail, off on the edges. So suppose SAT exams are normally, dis normally distributed with a mu of 1,000 and a sigma of 200. We are going to consider samples of size n equals 1 and n equals 4. Okay, so this is pretty commonplace. SAT exams, um, big exams like that, are often normalized. That means that they design them so that they create a normal distribution. Most people score around 1,000, right? Very few people score up here at the high end or the very low end. Okay, so... First thing they want us to do is label each distribution with mean standard deviation n and then find the probability that x bar is less than 800 for both samples. What does that imply? Okay, well I've already labeled them right here, but I want to show you where it came from. So our original standard deviation is 200. Well, the original standard deviation is for the population and that holds for when n equals 1. So that's why this one right here says sigma. Sigma is 200 because that has the full spread. This black curve right here is the population curve. Now to find the standard error of x bar, SE, I couldn't put in the x bar there, but standard error of the x bar, and I'll just leave it like that, but there should be a bar over that x, but I can't put it in there. All you have to do is follow the formula from the central limit theorem. You need to take sigma and divide it by the square root of n. But sigma we know is 200. So we're going to divide 200 by the square root of n, and n was 4 for this one. So I'm going to grab my calculator and take 200, although honestly I don't need a calculator for this one, but divide it by the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, and 200 divided by 2 makes 100. And that's where the 100 comes from, right there. Okay, so let's start this with n equals 1. So when n equals 1, I want to find the probability that x is less than 800. Well, this is a normal curve, so we're going to use the normal distribution, the normal CDF distribution. And we can get help for ourselves a little bit from the decision matrix. I know it's sideways, but bear with me here. So we have an x value right here, an x value given to us, 800. And we're looking for the area under the curve. So we're going to be using normal CDF right there, left, comma, right, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation, that one right there. Here, I can tilt it this way for the sake of our videos so you guys can see it. There we go. And we can see we know the x value, 800. We're looking for the probability, the area, so we're going to use normal CDF. Okay, so let me go back to chapter 8. So n equals 1, I want to use normal CDF. I'm going to start over here on the left-hand edge, which is negative 1 E99. I'm going to go all the way up to 800. I'm going to stop right there. And my mean is 1,000. I'm on the black curve. My mean is 1,000, and my standard deviation is 200. All right, now I did it already, but let me show you here. Okay, so clear this out. Distribution, which is above my variables button. Number two, normal CDF. There's negative 1E99, 800, 1200, oops, me, 1,000, I'm sorry. 1,000, there we go, enter, 200. Go to paste and press enter, and it pasted it in. So now press enter again, and there you have it, 0.1587. And that means the chances that one random student scores less than 800 is 0.1587. Okay, great. What about four students, though? Well, it's the same idea, except with four students, it's going to be an X bar, right? Not an X. X is individuals. We're going to have X bar right here. Okay. All right. So when it's X bar, what's going to change? Well, let's see, right? Oh, and it's n equals 4, right there. Well, the negative 1e99 doesn't change, the 800 doesn't change, but what does change is this 200 right here. It becomes 100, and that's going to mean that our result's going to be different. So I go back to distributions, pick number 2, and then instead of 200, I'm going to put 100. Enter and paste. I get 0 0.0228. Now, 
Now that's a different thing. It means that the probability that a random group of four students has an average, right, a sample mean less than 800 is 0 0.002, 0228. That's very different than the other one, right? Because the other one's talking about a single student scoring low, right, if you will. But this is talking about a group of four random people having an average that's low. That's much harder to come by, right? You can get one student scoring lower than 800, sure, right? It happens 15% of the time. But having four random people score that low on average, that doesn't happen so often, right? And that would be right here. So it is much harder for a random um, group's average to be far from the mean. In other words, it would have a lower probability. Because your spread is smaller, right? So it's hard to be off in the tail when you have a smaller spread. These four people, because they're random, they're going to balance each other out. You're not going to get all four of them to be low like that very often. All right, now let's do it again, but let's talk about a central probability. So we looked at the tails and we saw that the tails for the gray one were much smaller. But what about being in the center, right? Being near the mean. Okay, so we have here same SAT scores, mean of 1,000, standard deviation 200, all that jazz, okay? And I've already labeled them with the same labels as before. So now we want to talk about being in that center. So when you have n equals 1, we're talking about being between 900 and 1100, and I already drew it right there. So it's that kind of black portion that's got the checker mark on it. That's what we're looking for. All right, so I typed it up. Normal CDF, 900 to 1100. 1000 is our mean, 200 is our sigma for this black curve here. So I'm going to go back to distributions, hit number 2, normal CDF. I'm going to tie 900. Enter, 1100, enter, 1000, and 200. I'll go to paste and press enter, and there we have it. And that means that 38.29% of individual test takers score between 900 and 1100, right? So around 38% of each, 38% uh, of um, the students that take this test score in that range from 900 to 1100. Okay, but what if it's 4? n equals 4. That's the gray one. And hopefully you're noticing there's a lot of that gray curve in that area. So it should be larger, and it is. So let me show you how to get it. So you go back to distributions, number 2, normal CDF. All this is good, except your standard deviation is no good. You want 200 divided by the square root of 4. Or if you'd like, you could say 100. The computer can actually handle it written like this, so you'd actually never even have to find the 100 if you don't want to. And press Enter, and you get 6827. So 68.27% of random samples of four test takers have a sample mean between those, right? And again, it's because people balance each other out. So they're more likely to be in the center, less likely to be on the edges when you're talking about groups of size four's averages. Right, the average of a group of four random people. So the two put together means that we've learned something very important. The average of a group of four random people, random is a big deal, but four random people is more likely to be near the center, near the mean, and less likely to be very low or very high, i.e. in the tails. Right? Being in the tails is hard for four people because people, if they're random, will balance each other out. I'll even add that. Being in the tails is difficult for four random people because their scores will tend to balance out. I'm just going to put balance out in quotes. Each other. Right? You'll get some highs, you'll get some lows, but they'll all kind of even out. And that means that it is much easier easier, sorry, I'm having issues with my computer here, easier for a random group's average to be around the mean. And that means they're going to have a higher probability because you have a smaller spread. All right, done with that.